numbers that you have, um, you know, your, your IRR is about 36%, your EBITDA is 2.2 billion annual of 81 million. I mean, those are pretty good figures, right? In, in any man's terms. Um, what's your thoughts on, obviously, you know, we had what you spoke about, about a little bit of negativity that came onto the uh, market when you guys released it, but um, those are pretty good numbers though, aren't they? Well, they're excellent numbers by any, yeah, by any account. Now, if you look at projects, uh, ASX mining projects around, those numbers are very strong. Uh, and the message was that we were trying to put out was that this is our base case DFS. So, uh, we've worked very hard um, to make sure that we are as confident as possible about this DFS. Um, we're also, we've been conservative on the numbers um, for that reason. So. Um, this is, uh, as I say, a base case DFS. This is the first stage of our business. So it's the first in many stages of the business. And it's going to go on from this point from strength to strength. So what we try to do here is we try to say start with a base case, but with a staged approach. So we now um, will start as described in stage one. And stage one will be in profit by the second year. So that's very quick, very quickly into profit. But the profit from that from that stage one will be then uh, reinvested back into subsequent stages. So we ramp up that, uh, and we'll increase the capacity of the plant. We increase the product, um, the refining level of the products coming out, and that's why the the payback period is now five point nine years, where originally it was about uh, around about eighteen months for the PFS. So that's one uh, big change in numbers, but it it is purely been done, has been done. Uh, to make sure we minimised any requirements for capital. So that was a very important thing that we wanted to get included. Um, you mentioned the IIR. Well, the IIR was originally 175% for the PFS, very high number. But the reason for that was there was no real capex in that PFS. We were shipping DSO um, overseas or direct shipping ore, which was then going to be processed overseas um, with a toll refining company. So it meant that the IR was extremely high. Now we've decided um, since that PFS came out, the DSO option uh, is still attractive. It was still attractive. There's still a very strong demand for it. We had people ready to sign off takes for that material, um, but the margins were quite small and diminishing with the huge increase in logistics costs around the world, uh, shipping, supply chains. It was all getting worse and worse. So we decided that we wanted to capture the most value we possibly could um, with the minimum investment from that material. So every ton of our material, we want to get the most value out, out of that material, not give it away to someone else. So we changed to a plant up front. Um, of course, that means that we need investment up front. So the IR went down to 36%. But 36% uh, is still a very good number. Now, when you can, can consider the MPV, um, again, a conservative one, but over $600 million, you mentioned the EBITDA, two point, almost $2.3 billion. So yeah, some very strong numbers here. Uh, and we're happy that we can substantiate all those numbers. Uh, and we're happy to use them now as the base case uh, for, the, for the subject, for the project going forward from this point. And we anticipate that those numbers will improve and get better as you move forward into production.